Hello everyone. So by now we know how to undo many derivatives that require the application of chain rule. We may never remember how to do all of the problems under the sun analytically, but we at least have a strong set of techniques to work from. Today we're looking at undoing derivatives that are a result of the product rule. So the product rule works like this in general. If we have a function h that's defined by a product f and g that are both functions themselves, then the derivative of h is the derivative of f times g plus the derivative of g times f. So we would go f prime g plus f g prime. So that means that the function h would be the integral of this function. So that would be f prime g plus f g prime with respect to x. So that means the product of f and g would look like this. f prime g dx plus f g prime dx so we can do a bit of manipulation to get this term on its own. In order to do that, we would subtract this term from both sides, and we would get fg minus integral of f prime g. And this is how we integrate by parts. So in general, here's what we have, and this is the version we have on our formula sheet. We're gonna go through a bunch of questions today, and this is going to be our guiding strategy. The version of this advice that's specific to our formula sheet, we would replace this f with u. So we're looking to choose a function that becomes simpler when differentiated. I'll also show you some examples of what it looks like to make a poor choice, and I'll try to write that in red. Let's start with this first example, which is x times e to the x. So I'll start by making a choice for u. We'll maybe go with e to the x, and I need a choice for dv as well, and that's going to be x times dx. So this entire integral is accounted for in u and dv. Next thing I need to do is take the derivative of u. So the derivative of u is going to be e to the x dx. And the antiderivative of x dx will give us v, which is x squared over 2. And now we have all the pieces we need for integration by parts. We have u, v, and du. So we're going to go u, v, subtract the integral of v du. So e to the x times x squared divided by 2 would give us 1 half x squared e to the x. And then we subtract v du, which will be x squared divided by 2 times e to the x dx. Now, unfortunately, this looks a little more complicated than what we began with. So it looks like we're going to have to do something different. So let's make a better choice for u and dv. This time I'm going to pick u is x and dv I'm going to pick as e to the x dx. So next du will be dx because the derivative of x with respect to x is just 1. And the antiderivative of this thing will give us v, which is e to the x. And now we have all the pieces required for integration by parts. We go uv minus integral of v du. So uv v du. First up, we have x times e to the x. Subtract the integral of e to the x dx. So x e to the x minus the integral of e to the x dx. So x e to the x stays the same. And we take the antiderivative of e to the x. So that's just itself. And we should add a constant. And last, I guess we can factor in e to the x out of both of these terms, giving us e to the x times x minus 1 plus c. So let's try x cos 2x. We'll start by making a poor choice for u and dv. So suppose I chose cos 2x for u, and for dv, that would be x dx. Next du would be negative 2 sine 2x dx, and then v would be x squared divided by 2. And bringing this all together with the integration by parts formula, we would have 1 half x squared cos 2x minus the integral of x squared divided by 2 times negative 2 sine 2x dx. And I guess one simplification we would have here is these 2's would cancel, but in general it looks like we have something more complicated here to integrate than we did at the start. So let's pick something better for u and dv. This time we'll pick u equals x and dv equals cos 2x dx. And now du will equal dx, and v will equal sine 2x, 1 half. And we can confirm that's the correct result, because if we took the derivative of this, it would give you cos 2x. So now let's piece it together with the integration by parts formula. 
we would have u times v, which would give us 1 half x sine 2x, subtract v du, so the integral of 1 half sine 2x dx. Now, where did this derivative come from? It would have come from a cos 2x, but if we took the derivative of cos of 2x, that would be negative sine 2x times 2. So in order to account for the sine, we should have a negative. And in order to get rid of the 2 that would come out of chain rule, we should multiply by 1 half. So that's the result of the integral. And that's still being multiplied by that factor of negative 1 half. And we should add a constant c. And this term comes along as well. So we'd have 1 half x sine 2x. Next, we can simplify this a little bit. So we would have the same term here, x sine 2x. This would give positive 1 quarter times cos of 2x plus c. And I guess we could factor a quarter out to get rid of some of the fractions. So that would give us 2x sine 2x plus 1 times cos of 2x plus c. So let's try some more. Doing ln x, you might be thinking at this point, don't we have something for this? Isn't there something on our formula sheet? Well, what we do have is 1 over x dx. That's equal to ln x. But we don't actually have anything for this directly on our formula sheet. So we'll try something. We'll maybe let u equal ln x, and we'll let dv equal the only thing that's left, dx. So the derivative of ln x is 1 over x dx, and the antiderivative of dx gives us v, and that would be x. So now we can piece together the integral, and that would be u times v. So it would be x ln x minus the integral of v du. So it would be x times 1 over x dx. And x divided by itself is just 1. So we would have x ln x minus the integral of dx. And that's a fairly easy one to do. So we would have x ln x minus x plus c. And I guess we can factor an x out of both of these terms. So we would have x ln x minus 1 plus c. If you're ever unsure of a result, you can always try typing this into Wolfram Alpha. So in Wolfram Alpha, we would just type in integral of ln x dx. And it's fairly forgiving with spaces and everything. And it even gives you some suggestions if you want to do a definite integral. So with this, I'll just leave it as is, hit enter, and it does it for you. It may not do it step by step, but it shows you the analytical result if there is one. And there is a slight difference in notation here. It just uses log for the natural log. So now that we're happy with our answer, let's move on to the next one. So this one's a little unclear what we should use for u and dv. It might be helpful to maybe factor out an x first. So we'll go x, 5x ln x plus 4 dx. And now at this point, maybe we can try u equals x and dv equals 5x ln x plus 4 dx. So du is fairly straightforward. That would just be dx. But this one's not so great. I'd rather not do this antiderivative. So let's try something different. Let's maybe switch them. Let's go 5x ln x plus 4 and dv equals x dx. So with this choice, du, we'd have to apply product rule here. So that would be 5 ln x plus 5x times 1 over x because the derivative of ln is 1 over x and that would be times dx and then v would be x squared divided by 2. And I guess this could simplify a little bit to 5 ln x plus 5 times dx. So we can feed this into the integration by parts formula and see what happens. So we would have x squared over 2 times 5x ln x plus 4 minus x squared divided by 2 times 5 ln x plus 5 dx. So this looks about the same as what we were originally trying to avoid. So it looks like maybe we should try something different. So let's maybe start by splitting this integral up a little bit differently. So we'll go 5x squared ln x dx plus 4x dx. This one's a little bit more straightforward to do. 
So it looks like the only thing we need to integrate by parts is this one. So we're looking to pick a u that makes this simpler. So we'll maybe pick ln x in this case. So we'll go u equals ln x and dv equals x squared dx. So it might not end up being the correct choice, but we'll give it a go. So du is 1 over x dx and v would be x cubed divided by 3. And we can feed this into the integration by parts formula. So we would have 5 u times v, so ln x times x cubed divided by 3. So x cubed divided by 3 times ln of x minus the integral of this times that. So x cubed divided by 3 times 1 over x dx. And don't forget this part as well. So next I guess we could go 5x cubed divided by 3 ln x. And this would simplify to give just x squared over 3. And the antiderivative of x squared would be x cubed divided by 3. So with everything, we would have negative 5 times 1 third times x cubed over 3. And then the antiderivative of x would be x squared divided by 2. So if this is x squared divided by 2, x squared divided by 2 times 4 works out to be 2x squared. And we should have a constant. So next, I guess we'd go 5 thirds x cubed ln x minus 5 over 9 x cubed plus 2x squared plus c. So if you want to tidy this up a little bit, I guess you could factor out an x squared over 9. Each one of these terms has at least an x squared, and factoring out 1 over 9 gets rid of the fractions. So we would then have 15x ln x minus 5x plus 18 plus c. So I'll leave this one for you to do. You can confirm the result with the textbook. It's question number 1e on page 514. Alternatively, you could type this into Wolfram Alpha and see what the result should be. But at any rate, you're going to have to use integration by parts twice, and you can compare it to the result that you should get. So we'll do this one together, which also requires integration by parts twice, so you can get a sense of what it looks like. So remember our goal is to pick a u and a dv, so that u, when we do the derivative, gets simpler. So in this case, we're going to pick x squared for u, and du will be 2x dx and dv will be whatever's left. So we're going to have to do sine 3x dx. And the antiderivative of sine 3x would be 1 third cos 3x. And I guess we should also have a negative here because the derivative of cos is negative sine. So let's deconstruct this integral using integration by parts. We will have u times v, so it will be negative 1 third x squared cos of 3x then we subtract the integral of v du. So that would be negative 1 third cos 3x times 2x dx. So we can simplify this a little bit. So the first term I guess will stay the same. Negative 1 third x squared cos 3x. And we will have plus 2 thirds integral of x cos 3x dx. And it turns out we'll need to integrate this by parts as well. So in a similar decision for u, we'll pick x. And in a similar decision for dv, we'll pick cos 3x dx. So here du will equal dx. And v will be 1 third sine of 3x. So the derivative of sine 3x divided by 3 will give us that thing. So now we can split this thing up further using integration by parts. So this first term will stay the same, plus 2 thirds. And we'll have xv, so that will be 1 third x sine 3x. And then we subtract the integral of v du, so that'll be 1 third sine of 3x dx. So we can pull this 1 third out. And where did this derivative come from? So that would have come from a negative 1 third cos 3x. So now let's piece it all together. So we have negative 1 third x squared cos of 3x. And we need to make sure to distribute this 2 thirds into each thing inside here. So we would have 2 over 9 x sine 3x. 
and for this term we would have two-thirds times negative one-third times negative one-third again. So in the denominator we would have three times three times three, which is 27. And in the numerator we would have two times one times one, which is two. And the sign should be positive because we have positive, negative, negative. So all total we should have two over 27 times cos of three x and we should also have a constant here as well. So that's it for that one. So we'll stop short of doing this one for today. I'd like to give you a little bit of a chance to try it out on your own. It's pretty neat if you can get it. We'll go over the answer at the beginning of the next video, and I'll see you next time.